So you got your ham license, you've got a radio, you want to use it for the first time. How do you do that? We're going to discuss that and more today on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. All right, so you got your license, right? You got a radio, you're ready to get on there, you want to know what to do, but maybe you're not quite sure. Well, I want to talk about that in this video here, and I'm going to try to make it a shorter video than some of my other ones, but we'll see what happens. We'll see how it goes along here. Um, getting on the radio is not really that difficult. You just have to know a couple little protocols, and I'm going to go over those that stuff right now. So let's pop over to my desktop. Okay, so when you want to talk on a ham radio, at first, just listen. Find a repeater or find a, find a channel people are talking on, and just listen for a little bit and see how people are interacting with each other. That's the best way to learn a lot of this stuff. Because you'll see, it's going to be, the, the protocols be the same in most areas as far as the general protocols. But there's certain things, like in my area, they say things a little bit differently. They might say things a little differently where you are. So you want to really pay attention to that and just follow along and just get used to what they're, what they're doing and, you know, copycat what they're saying. Pay attention how how each how each of the people speak to each other on the radio. Of course, always start and finish your conversation with your call sign, which we'll get into in a second. And remember, from your training and from your from your technician test, you must call out your call sign every ten minutes in a longer conversation. So let's go over the common practices of using a ham radio. Um, now, like I, I've told you guys before, my local area here we have a daily net that my club puts on and everybody can check in and they have a question of the day and everybody kind of gives the responses and talks about, we just kind of chat and learn things from one another from everybody's experience. So when we're doing a check-in, the net control operator will say, hey, if you want to check in, we're going to take all check-ins now, please come forward, blah, blah, blah. And that is your key to grab your radio. So I got my radio here and you'd depress the button. You say, this is, and let the button go, let the repeater reset for a second. That's what I mean by unkeying your mic and waiting for a second. Then you go and say your call sign. So in my case, be KI5NPL, so on and so forth. You can also call out, you probably should if you know the phonetic alphabet and you should know this by now. Uh, you can call out your call sign in uh, phonetically because it makes it easier for the net control operator to find and, and log you in as a check-in. So in my case, it'd be, this is Kilo India 5, November Papa Lima, Scott. And that identifies you. Then they get you logged in and get you on the list. And when it's your turn to talk, they'll call you out by your call sign and let you, you know, do your, do your talk. Now, like I said, this is going to vary depending on your area, who's running that, things like that. But it, it mostly will be, it'll mostly be the same. Okay, so if you're looking to make a contact, so you're on your radio, you're at home, you're on your on your uh, HT, you're on your base station, whatever, you want to make a contact with somebody, the word listening comes into play here. So in this case, if I was at home just sitting here and want to make a contact, I'd hit my button. Sorry about that. I'd hit my button and I'd say, KI5MPL listening, and you wait. If somebody's out there, You'll get somebody else to call in their call sign, or they'll say your call sign, then they'll give you their call sign and start initiating a conversation. At that point, talk to them. You know, they're not, they're not, they're, they're going to probably just, you know, probably want to know who you are, a little about you, whatever. It's not scary, but you got to get used to doing the stuff. You bought a radio for a reason. The radio works because you're actually talking into the mic. So make sure you, you know, get, get over your phobias of speaking into a microphone or speaking on the radio. These people aren't here to, aren't here to hurt you. Uh, they're not going to bite. Uh, in most cases, you know, if you're a new ham, they're going to welcome you into the ham community, and they're going to, you know, want to know about you a little bit and find out maybe what some of your interests are, and that that, that sparks up the conversation. That's what, you know, this, this gets into. If you're driving, like when I'm in my truck and I got my mobile unit on, I'll jump in. The first thing I'll do, I'll grab my mic, KI5 MPL mobile, and let it go. Maybe people will contact you. Maybe they won't. If you're looking to make a contact in that situation as well, what I'd probably do is I just get on the radio and say, KI5 MPL mobile listening and let go. That will initiate 
a conversation, if there's another ham on the air, on that frequency, to initiate a call with you. If 10 minutes have passed, it's time for you to ID yourself on the frequency. You would wait, like if you're in a conversation with somebody, and, you know, it's been about 10 minutes, you wait for a break in the conversation, you grab your radio, and, and when it's your turn to talk, you'd say something along the lines of KI5NPL for ID, and then continue on with your conversation. That keeps you compliant with the FCC rules and lets you continue doing what you're doing on, on the radio with the other person. And they'll probably follow suit and do the same thing, or they might even do it before you. So if they do that before you, you know, obviously copy that and do the same thing if you haven't given out your call sign in a while. Another thing is like uh, when ending a conversation, you can say KI5 MPL clear. If that's the end of the conversation, you know, you've, you've talked to them like, hey, I've got to get rolling here. I've reached my destination. Or, hey, I, I've got to go running for a little bit, but I, I appreciate talking to you. And they say, okay, great, cool. It's, that's awesome. So, so, you know, KX123 clear. You just come back with your call sign and the word clear. Now, if you're in the conversation and another person is talking, you know, uh, and it, the conversation has, you know, kind of been left, it, you, you'll know when to do this. It's, it's really hard for you to kind of uh, explain how to do this, but you'll know. So if you're in a conversation where they're still talking, you can, okay, well, that's awesome. It was great talking to you. I have to run uh, 73 to you. This is KI5 MPL. I'll be clear on your final. That allows them to end the conversation and they'll, you know, say what they're going to say, and they'll give out their call sign and say, clear, the conversation's done. So hopefully it's not too uh, difficult to understand. I mean, there's a lot of other little things on here you can do, but the, jet, the, ba the main gist of it is when you get on the radio, follow these simple protocols. It'll make your life a lot easier. Uh, we have a guy in our, in our club, and I talk to him on occasion, and he has a thing, and this is just something he's just, become habitual for him when he gets on and you're talking to him when you f finish saying something he'll come back and say oh yeah qsl qsl and he'll go on with his conversation so he's basically acknowledging that he understood what you're saying or blah 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 and he's just using the q codes that are used in ham radio which i've got a i've got some another thing for you guys today i want to bring this up i've i went ahead and made a uh like a spreadsheet or a table of all the different Q codes, as I call them, that you're that are used in ham radio. So let's pop over there real quick and take a look. Okay, so we're on the website, hamradiofornontechies.com. If you've not been to that site yet, you need to go check it out. I got a lot of information on there. And I'm constantly adding more. So let's go check this out real quick. Under the ham radio tips section, I have a section here called ham radio acronyms. If you click on that, okay, so under here, I have all, not all, I have the most common used Q codes on the air. So you have all these different codes here on the left side and what they mean and the answers to what, what they mean. So we we're talking about uh, the QSL code. Let me see if I've got it here. Yeah, you see it says QSL here, can you acknowledge receipt? And the answer is I am acknowledging receipt. So when that guy was telling me, you know, I say something to him, he, goes, he comes back with, oh, QSL, QSL, and then he continues with the conversation. He's acknowledging he's received what I, what I said prior. So take a look at this stuff. There's a lot of information on here. You're not going to use all of them. You're not required to use a lot of them. But if you want to brush up and increase your skill in the use of ham radio, it's good to know what some of these are because you're going to run across people who have been in this for a long time that are used to using these Q codes and they're going to have them in the conversation and it would help you to know what it is you're, what, what you're hearing. Now, if you study your technician, it went over a couple few of these. I think it went over QSL, uh, went over QSY, which was changing frequencies. Yeah, QSY, uh, please change transmission frequency to blah, blah, blah. So go through this list here, check that stuff out, and learn these things. It'll help you out. It'll help you be a better ham down the road, and it'll allow you to understand things you're going to hear on the radio. And when it comes down to it, it's just going to take some time. You're not in any big hurry. There's no prize you get there first. So just get on the radio, listen, and see what people have to say, and join in the conversation. Have fun with this. It's really not that difficult. I went ahead and went down uh, further, and there's more acronyms. We love acronyms in ham radio. Acronyms, because it just it shortens things for us. Uh, so there's a whole list of acronyms here that will help you out with different things in ham radio. And I implore you to check it out and... Uh, Learn these as well.
mean, you don't have to memorize them or anything like that, but if you need to come back for some sort of a uh, reference, then these will help you out as a reference for these different acronyms. So definitely go check that out. You know, I've got, like I said, I've got a lot of stuff on the site for you guys, and I'm constantly adding more. Um, I was going to say this for later on. Well, I guess we'll just go ahead and get into it since we're here. I also did another chart, which is ham radios by license. So on here, on the left side, it shows the different uh, frequency, the different meters that you can you can broadcast on. And if you're a technician, general, or extra, what your privileges are on those channels. So you can take a look at this thing here, and that'll kind of help. It kind of like, look at it kind of like a cheat sheet, separate from the one that I gave you guys before, that will help you to understand what frequencies you can get on and what you can do on those frequencies. You'll see some here that are marked CW, and you'll see some here that are marked pH. CW is for doing Morse code on the carrier wave and pH for phone or voice. So you can actually talk on the ones that have pH behind them. You have different you have different uh, levels of the uh, of the frequency there. So that should really help you guys out a little bit and give you some more references to further along your education as becoming a more proficient ham radio operator. Uh, I don't think there's anything else in here left that I've got Oh, I did add a couple of, there are some other things. I added some current ham condition stuff. This is more if you're getting into HF. Um, if you're going into, a, into HF the, um, frequencies and stuff. These are just some charts that kind of show you the K index, the A index. Shows you what the sunspot activity is on the planet. There's a whole bunch of little things you can go in here and take a look at. And it'll help you determine what days are good or what times of day are good for propagation on specific high frequency channels. So check that out and give that a shot. Um, you know, it, you'll, I'll, I'll get into this a lot further down the road, but for right now, I just wanted you guys to know these are on here. And I'm, like I said, I'm continually adding more stuff to this uh, site to try to keep you guys updated, and uh, we'll just keep rocking and rolling from there. By the way, if you guys enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. It'll help out with the Google algorithm. Let me go back to my maiden cam here. It helps out the main Google, with the, or not the Google alg algorithm. It helps out with the, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm scatterbrained today. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm to show my video to more hams that are people that are interested in ham radio to find my videos. Also, if you like this, uh, this channel and like the videos I'm producing here, I, I, I ask you guys to, to subscribe and hit the little bell. It helps me out and uh, keeps things moving forward. You know, support the channel, support the stuff, and I'll keep bringing you guys the best content that I can come up with to make sure you guys stay informed. So with that, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. But, you know, like I said, the bottom line is get on the radio. Get on there and listen. Engage people. You're going to make a whole bunch of new friends. No one's going to bite your head off. People understand, that, especially the old, older hams that have been this for a while, they understand when a new ham gets on, you're going to make mistakes. They're not going to chastise you for it. They're going to help you out. They might make a comment or something like, hey, you know, maybe you want to try this sometime but they're not going to rip on you about anything. So just don't worry about those things. If you do get somebody like that, then ignore them. Don't let them, don't let them get you down. This is a, this be a, supposed to be a great hobby and a great um, art, if you will. And you do your best. But the main, the main thing is to get on the radio, engage people, make new friends, ask questions. You find somebody who knows stuff. You know, I get on there all the time. Like, hey, what do you think about this piece of uh, equipment? Or what do you think about this radio? And you'll get you'll get responses back. You now, you might not get the best responses all the time, but you need to do your research. But at least it gives you a starting point to get started in ham radio and learn more stuff and maybe find somebody to become friends with on a regular basis and talk to. That can that can help you out immensely. So give that stuff a shot. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna check out. I am doing the next video on the uh, ham radio base stations. My top picks for that. So don't miss that episode, and we will catch you guys later. 73s.